Hey everybody, Will Tompkins here at Tom Cruise Studios, live music in Austin, bringing you episode number nine of Three Beers and a Whiskey. This one featuring A.D. Hernandez and Curtis Lee. Here is the whiskey and beer number three. When did you meet Obi? Um, when I, <laughs> when I was playing Hondos. That's what I was, you know, oh, yeah, that was, he, was story probably, about, yeah. he was probably one of the first, like, in the scene guys that I sat down and talked with. And, I mean, he was so, I mean, he was just so humble at the beginning of it, man. He was just like, how, you know, what are your, like, what are you, what are you trying to do? How can I, is there anything I can do to help you, you know? He just always offered the hand. And then he was always a good critic, man. Like, he always knew. Most of the time through my career, it was like, he would have and flow. Sometimes I had good ideas, sometimes I had bad ideas. But he'll let you know, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And he would always, you know, you know, he would always be the big brother. You know, he would be my kid, my kid brother. It's just like, <laughs> but his whole, his whole vibe was that, man. I mean, he knew his place in this city as yep. a, he, what, yeah. what, where he, you know, what he really progressed at was really inspiring everybody. I mean, he was an amazing, talented person, but he really inspired and everybody. And how you find people like you and pull out the best of it and then Dude. emote the crap out of people. Just like, hey, I'm playing yeah, a show. And you know what? Your music is nothing like what I'm doing on stage, but you're going to open for me. Oh, you're yeah. Come in. Oh, yeah. He had a very yeah. wide spectrum of music. He really he did. He loved all types of stuff, 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 man. So, yeah. 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 Uh, you got to play guitar with him on stage a few times. Huh? Yeah, man. I got you know, just about it. Uh, every musician has because he's he's so <laughs> open. dude. I mean, I'm just saying, like he, you know, he's at one point. I mean, everyone was lucky enough to be able to yeah, man. be on stage with him at any you know, if it's not for his project, he would just show up and wreck the stage for you and come band. up and be like. Hey. Get on up here! Uh, you know, oh, you know yeah. up there, and he's doing it so long and doing it so good. It was yeah. uh, the, the uh, like muscle memory. He he yeah. didn't even have to like really try. He just got up there and just just destroyed it. So sure, you know, we're digressing off. You know, God bless you, God. Still, uh, still miss you, man. Always will. Yes. Um, so we got February. We got a project coming out. Sure. Um, so are you in Nashville? Like you're just hammering away and beating down the music door. Sure. Um, That's why I left. I, love <laughs> I mean, I love Austin. Austin's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. And there's so much talented music here. But that's but, also a good reason to get out of your way. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just kind of, I see the difference between the two cities. I mean, Nashville's about half the size of Austin. Mm -hmm. um, so it's more condensed. And that same collective that I felt like in the 90s, like, you know, like the people, root of it here, the root of it, like okay. how everyone was, knew each other and was kind of, you know, helping each other. And, uh, but really, I mean, the main reason why I'm there is because all the industry's there, you know? I mean, right. I mean, the, the independent kinda, industry, but the big, big. Everyone's there. Is there the, I the mean, every. promotion. Every festival, every tour has a headquarters there. Wow. Okay. You know, so I mean, know it's that. like, yeah. I mean, every, pretty much everything that I was looking to do had Some something sort of there. root or base. Yeah. Uh, that. Okay. And, and that, that kind of, kind of drew me to it. But the fact that I'd worked there before, you know, I had gone over this plan. I'm going to go to Nashville. I'm going to visit, I'm going to visit Chicago and then I'm going to go back out to LA and do my LA thing and see what happens and just kind of see what I can do in a year. And, but I never loved Nashville because I just liked that it was kind of like a small Austin. It re I, I, I mean, I have to say that's what really sunk me in. They, they don't have those damn t-shirts that say, don't Austin my Nashville, do they? No, no. <laughs> but, but what's funny is they, most of the Nashville people uh -huh. there are from Austin. Like when I moved, uh -huh. like most of these artists that I was, that would come, oh, you're from Austin? Me too, man, I used to live there. Why did you move? Well. Why did you move? You know, it was kind of this sort of way. Here we go. Oh, man, I'm just trying to find <laughs> out, but but I mean, you know, Austin is is a very band oriented city. Like okay. I mean, Austin, there's okay, yeah. there's yeah. it's all about the show and having a band and putting a badass show together and getting yeah. a crowd. Yeah. You know, the licensing and royalties and all that. Kind of like you know, it's secondary right. here. It's about you you practice, you get your shit together, you go do your shows. That's priority here. Okay. That's why there's so many bands here. That's why there's so many great bands here. Because yes. everyone's they're compete. All those bands are competing against mm -hmm. each other. It's about 
It's like you're really not doing anything unless you have a band here. Right. Nashville's all about singer songwriter, writer rounds, and all these, you know, because they just want to buy the song. They want to license the ah, song. Ah, okay. So and like then you end up with you. So me going there, I, I'm used to being in a band scenario. I mean, there are bands there. Don't get me wrong. But the majority of everything happening there is about the industry. It's yeah. about the song. It's about the writing. It's about you know. So it's different. Yeah. You know. So you that really can't different. you can't compare the two. You know, um, not talent wise, not anything. It's just it's just it's just different. You know. So uh, it's new for me. I mean, I've always had a band. I used to. I, I'm sure you've heard me say this a million times, but I would be like, "Damn, we're playing another acoustic show." Like I hated playing acoustic. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I, I would just I'd rather be rock full band music. rock it in your face, have the big show. Holy crap, always, boy, you could do that too, man. I always that was but that's how I was raised here, you know, like in the Austin scene. That's so when I went there and they were like uh, everyone kept inviting me to these ride arounds and these showcases and this and I, I started realizing I'm like sitting next to people that write for like Johnny Cash and you know, all these huge people, uh, I'm just like... People you've never met, but the word... I've never met, but they're, they're like, that. dude, the Rascal Flatts... I, I did a master session for Rascal Flatts because I sat next to somebody, and I'm just like looking at all this talent, that these people that I don't get any credit, except mm-hmm. for on the liner notes. Yes, yeah, right, in the notes somewhere, if somebody so, reads it, they might know. So going, to, that's where you go to meet everybody. But has that... So how's that honed your... your because... Uh, I'm pretty sure most everybody in here knows your skills on guitar are like thank you pretty you know I'm like okay well when Santana dies at least you know who's, who's gonna replace <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm not trying to knock you off sir but he's so, putting a new album out of favor. <laughs> so, so am I so, so are you uh, so so has it helped you like hone doing that. Singer songwriter things that really brought it like central core to you to be able to come back here and be like, okay, guys, check this out and share what you're learning out there, or are you I mean, teaching people out there? Um, I'm learning a lot there. I went there to learn. Cool. I mean, the whole thing is, I mean, you never know. You shouldn't stop as, a, as an artist, you really don't know shit because <laughs> somebody's gonna know. I'm just saying, you. That, I mean, that's the beauty of it. I mean, everyone has their thing and there's always something to learn there's always something and if you're always open-minded learning, learning. you know if you're open-minded and you really love music I mean you can continue the the growth forever man I mean it's it's never ending you see Austin and your Brace. taste can change dude you can like I mean my over you know years I've been performing <laughs> y'all hear that I heard that number this time <laughs> That's how it almost came out but, but the thing is it's like it changes you know I mean, yeah. as a listener as a, I, as as a listener as a fan you grow of it, and you, you're like okay now I'm sick of this and you move yeah. and that's how yeah. I, mean, I never get sick of the stuff on the roots on but you know I give credit to Marissa because you know Country, I guess, is really what is it? Country and Tejano and Norteña is all of what her roots are. And there's stuff that, you know, I was always <laughs> with, you know, the metal and the rock and, you know, and, and the soul and the hip hop. And, and then she's like, well, here, listen to this. And I'm like, okay. And then I listened to it. And I'm like, all right, well, actually, that is good. I might be admitted, but yeah, that's good. I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, no. I'm not going to tell you because then, you know, you'll say, I told you, I told you. So, yeah, um, I told you, yeah. But yeah, you're right. I mean, that, that it, it, and it's not just as you get older, stuff changes, but if you take the moment to, you know, stand there and listen, sure. then it, it may not be the, the brand of music I like, but then you can pull stuff out and go, I like shit. Yeah. This is yeah. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. yeah. It's like, just, just listen, you know, I like anything that's performed well, pretty much. And, well, and some stuff that's performed bad. I mean, but, but, but sometimes but that's, that's fun. Not that's fun. That's not content. Because, <laughs> I mean, I've been to an Overlord show where it was like, I was like, that train was wrecking hard, but it was still <laughs> a great, great Lucky Lounge. Yeah, and there was a couple of Lucky oh, Lounge shows. Wow. It was like, and, but it was, it, he would come off later and be like, 
do not write about that. And I'm like, oh, no, it was, it was awesome. And he's like, no, it's terrible. Nah. I'm like, well, that was from you on stage or me over here. That was badass. Yeah, you forgot great. like oh, half of the lyrics and it was great. <laughs> they started mumbling. Is Lucky Lamb still it's, open? I don't know. No, it's going no, no. Hey, okay then. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. You make me go. Look at that. Look at He's got red fez. And you been going. I, I don't know. I, 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 I actually, I was, was before he left. I, yeah, yeah, I, was I, was I, I, I was trying to forget about that place for a minute. No, no disrespect, but like yeah, I used to play with Boombox and and with yeah. other projects, but like mm-hmm. we used to sit there and like you know joke about the pay. Oh. <laughs> oh or working the soundboard. We would have on bets. the stage. We'd have bets like. I bet it ain't even like. Oh no, I've heard this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just gonna say it. It. We're like me, Jai, and Les, <laughs> and like Stefano. We'd be sitting there going, "No, I think it's gonna be like eight dollars." And they're like, "No, no, no, no. It's clearly gonna be like six dollars." <laughs> and we'd be like, "No, no, no it was completely there. packed. I mean, there was like three to four hundred people here tonight. It was packed all night." Stefano. Hey guys, I'm just gonna go home. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're not even collection. No, he's like, I, I, was, I would be like, he's, he didn't even care to joke about it. He was just like, I'm, I'm out. And not, <laughs> not to, you know, it wasn't. But that's not it wasn't just so like sorry. That. It was just how they handled business, and it could have been. I mean, I wasn't doing any of the paperwork, but I'm just saying, like. That was the joke, you know. <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was funny, but it wasn't funny. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so we have there? a question from uh, our live studio audience. Oh, Somebody oh, wants to ask a question. I wanted to ask, how do you categorize your music? Because it uh, spans a lot of genres. Uh, that is a great question. So I'll, mm-hmm. I'll repeat, just in case Mike didn't pick it up, Meryl. Yes. Has joined us out here in the live studio audience, and the question. To eighty was how he would categorize his, you know, his music. Um, I think that's a damn good question. I was in the beginning when I started performing. Uh-huh. I was always told um, that you know my ADD was like off the charts, and, <laughs> and, and I really, I it's, really it's used to focus. Now. I don't think it hasn't slowed down. It's worse. But like, I was always told, you know, well, what are you doing? One song's you know, I had a song, Imprints, that was like metal. I mean, and then I had another song that was a Latin song. And then I had a, you know, a ballad. And then people were like, what are you, what are you doing? What do you, you know, what, can you focus? And <laughs> no. so at, a, at a, the very beginning, I was like, it's music for the soul. I'm going to just write nice. positive, vibey music. And there really isn't a category for that, but we know a lot of artists that do this. Mm-hmm. You know, um, artists are raised around all kinds of music, and they perform whatever comes up, comes out. It can be whatever their genre or background. Some people are really good at getting that hybrid and making a good click, like Ozo Motley. They're, they're a great hybrid yes. band that, like, they draw from all kinds of stuff, man. Yeah, they do. I mean, and they make it, but they, they're able to fuse it into something, you know, and then bring the crowd and then, and then everyone loves it and they don't really you know i mean how would you you know what would you call them you know what i, I mean it, it's a hard thing when you get to groups like that but but over time i always said you know uh, just music for the soul and i, I kind of claimed that for for years but as i started doing interviews and people started like getting the music and they were like dictating what they wanted to call it yeah. So, like we did this one uh, one interview for Playboy and they called it world music. And I was like I was like it's music that is viable anywhere anywhere in the world. world. Yeah. So it, it can be sung in any language. It's just music that's like very, you know, open to all genres, you know, to, to all cultures. Yeah. And you know, I Kind of thought that's what I was going for in the very beginning. I wanted to do, you know, I was like, oh, okay, well, cool. It's, it's world music. But then even that has, like, what you just said, oh, world music. You know, you, I mean, people have their perception of yep, what that is. So, perceptions or misconceptions. So I stayed with music for the soul. And that's what I always so, I tell people. It's like, what is it? Well, it's just music for the soul. You eat. Most people tell me when they leave the show, oh, man, I thank you. I feel better. Like, 
I had a shitty day. Oh, a lot of people say is, that. You know what? That's but, but that's, that's right there is, is right. We go to a GB's um, ADH project, and and it was like you'd leave the show and be like, yes, it didn't matter. It was so, all good. So that's that's what Wait, what it is. I mean, you know, I don't I'll, know how that fits in. I'll anywhere, take, but. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll my crowd perception. Um, and if I'm wrong, you can, you know, check me on this, but it was like, there is, I've always heard and felt a definitive Latin oh, yeah. vibe in almost everything you do, even when you were doing some of the more rock, sure. you know, so it, was up, it was still like, and that was, you know, one of my coworkers sitting over there and she's like, well, what are the kind of music? And I was like, it's Latin rock. That was the only way I could say it. I didn't music for the soul, but sure. you know, I mean, I, yeah, that's definitely. I'm afraid I'm like, if I say that, somebody's gonna stare at me, and then their eyes are gonna glaze over. Like music for the soul, and be like, uh, well, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. soul music, soul. soul like, no, 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 no. That's that's Curtis Lee. That's like, soul music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So I have two questions. Oh wait, we got two questions. Oh, before, before we start drinking yes. whiskey. So, question one or sure. question two? Oh, shit. <laughs> one, two, one, two. One. What do y'all want? One, two. What do y'all prefer? Whiskey or beer? When well, you're out of the show, whiskey whiskey performing, again. whiskey. There you go. Tequila. Oh! oh. oh. She didn't she ask you that. She, 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 she didn't ask you that. She didn't ask you that. Okay. Okay. The balcony. Then, then uh, <laughs> the difference between beer and whiskey. Would, you say whiskey? Whiskey. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm a beer guy. I'm a beer guy. I'm a beer guy, I'm a beer I'm a beer guy, guy too, time, man. I'm a beer guy. Yeah, it was great. It's it's a beer. Yeah, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm a beer guy. Yes. Oh, oh. yes. Oh. I mean, uh, okay, so what's question number two? I got, my mouth got sour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The salad oh, my God. taste just came through my mouth. Yeah, God, I used to love that stuff. So oh, much. Next time. Uh, oh, oh, next time. God, I love it. When I first joined the band, that's the week. I was like, yo, what? <laughs> You're like, yes! yes. And that was your initiation. <laughs> really, they were getting you were just, they were getting you to drink. I guess so. <laughs> oh my God. We used to do the, what, Lucy's? They would oh, come up on stage. Of- yeah, when it was, they would bring the, the bottle of chilled Jaeger. Yeah, while we were old. playing. They would, two o'clock would come, they'd shut the door and be completely packed. There'd be no yeah. room in the building. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't sell alcohol. So they would just get up on stage and start while we're yeah while we're playing it yeah. down our throats. <laughs> I still have question number two. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're all going <laughs> down our <laughs> life through train. <laughs> <laughs> so they're gonna rent it for I us. <laughs> so, okay, what do we got? So question number two: Can Curtis Lee sing us a quick one-liner? <laughs> yes. What kind of one-liner was this? Just one-liner. A Curtis Lee type one liner. First, voice. First, your money, then you close. What? I don't even know what. Mom. Uh. I don't know what the one liner like one line. I don't know what you just. Just like a. Like Led Zeppelin, or Ian Led Zeppelin. Oh. You call him out. You call him out on that. So. Yeah, wait, I hear the bus backing up over it now. It's been time for my loving. The second season I am to know. You are the sunlight in my chrome. So little warmth I've felt before. It isn't hard to feel me growing. I watched the fire that grew so low. And you hear that? Yeah! Monday night! Monday night! One to one! Alright, thank you everybody for watching that episode of Three Beers and a Whiskey featuring Eddie Hernandez and Curtis Lee. Make sure you come back and find the video for the after the interview performance by Eddie Hernandez, Curtis Lee, and special guest Jacob Gonzalez.